A stalled car on the causeway, and that was really starting to back up traffic, leaving Hayward. Let's go to KGO's Michael Lynn in Jetcopter 810. Jetcopter over the scene as the orange tow truck pulled that thing out of the right lane. Now you have a backup at the westbound San Mateo Bridge toll plaza. That is a little more than a quarter mile. Once you get past one mile past the toll plaza, you're going to zoom right over to San Mateo. I'm Michael Lynn, KGO Jetcopter 810. Okay, thank you. Alicia, we're going to go to Dave Callahan here. He's going to be talking on our Diablo repeater and and uh, Dave has been checking out Contra Costa County, highways 4 and 680. Yeah, highway 4 backs up from just before Summersville, out past railroad. 242 in Concord. You're backed up one mile on the 680 and 680. Ooh, it's backed up from a Willow Pass. All right, thank you, Dave. Heavy traffic is starting to build up now behind the Baybridge Toll Plaza, although it shouldn't be more than about a 10-minute wait immediately behind the cash box, and yet Highway 24 was backed up toward Children's Hospital for that westbound drive. Taking a look at the peninsula right now, we have KGO's Mike Zanta. Well, we have that big rig crash on the ramp from eastbound 380 to south 101, Lynn. It's still there causing a light, uh, a minor delay. No further problems past the airport all the way down the peninsula to Redwood City. All right, so 101, at least into San Mateo, looks pretty good right now coming away from the San Francisco airport. We've had no new accidents reported for the South Bay. I'm Lynn Derling with traffic on the 8th every 10 minutes on KGO News Talk 810. Highway 140 traffic report. As I listen to the radio on my way to school in the morning, I can't help but be grateful that I'm not stuck in the pileup on the westbound San Mateo or in the slowdown on eastbound 680. Six lanes of hybrid SUVs and big rigs idling with frustrated drivers behind the wheel just isn't my idea of a pleasant morning. Traffic is a fact of life in urban America, something people just put up with, like taking your shoes off before you get on a plane, something someone should figure out how to fix. Out here, the roads are mostly empty. There's a lot more scenery than clutter on the horizon. And I can actually see the horizon most of the time. A pilot friend of mine described driving through the desert this way. In Nevada, he said, you figure out how many miles you have to go, look at the time you have to get there, and adjust your speed accordingly. Traffic the way you think of it is not an issue, usually. In my corner of the world, Traffic is six sets of headlights in the 40-mile stretch that takes me across the Sodhouse Flat as I make the turn from Highway 95 onto 140. Traffic is when I follow a handful of pickups and minivans to a school program, and I pretty much know who's in every vehicle. Once on the way to a local gathering, we were stopped by our friendly neighborhood highway patrolman who noticed the package in the back seat as he warned me about speeding. Where are you off to in such a hurry, he asked me. Baby shower in Denio. Ah, he responded. I wondered about all the traffic. There were five vehicles ahead of us as far as we could see, and we could see 15 miles. Imagine being the local traffic reporter in this world. It might go something like this. Here's your local traffic report at 10 minutes past the hour from Jetcopter 810. There's a hay truck stalled with a smoking engine in the eastbound lane of Highway 140 at mile marker 34, causing a slowdown as gawkers stop to see what's going on. Traffic's backed up three pickup lengths as travelers rummage in their coolers for water bottles to help put out the blaze. Looks like they've got it under control. And here comes a tractor to haul the hay truck into the rest area turnaround. On the Denio repeater... Traffic has come to a standstill as both lanes are totally clogged with black bolly heifers at the Harness Place Hill. The Quinn River buckaroos appear to be trying to cross the highway southbound with the herd, and those girls just don't seem to want to move. Looks like some of the cattle are attempting to turn around and head northbound, making for a complete snarl-up. In addition, air quality appears to be deteriorating as there's a lot of hat-waving, and the atmosphere is filling with clouds of blue smoke above the cowboys at the back of the bunch. Looks like about a 10-minute wait while they clear that mess up, but it could be longer. Down by Coyote Point, heavy traffic is moving at a snail's pace as a herd of several hundred head of sheep appears to be stalled, consuming the ditch banks. It does look like they're starting to move, but not much progress is being made in any direction. 
Off 140, onto the Quinn River Road, a flock of rooster pheasants has apparently broken down in the middle of the lane, backing up several cottontails and a flock of quail. Again, gawkers are a problem as everyone in the neighborhood seems to be gathering to count the roosters and see which ones are the best targets. Up at the turnoff, two pickup trucks are stopped facing different directions, completely blocking both lanes. The drivers are apparently engaged in some kind of negotiation, as there is much arm-waving and pointing out the windows. Could be given directions to tonight's poker game at the neighbor's. Further south along the valley, watch for occasional antelope leaping into your path from either direction. Keep an eye out for flocks of ducks sleeping in the roadway as the cold mornings attract them to the pavement and golden eagles parked on the shoulders, cleaning up last night's roadkill. Motorists should be able to spot this last hazard by the flocks of crows surrounding them. And finally, there's a bull stuck in the cattle guard over the nine-mile summit. Travelers are advised to take the flat road into Kings River Valley until further notice. From Jetcopter 810, that's your Highway 140 traffic report for this afternoon. Happy traveling! Traffic in the city is all about flow and obstacles to it. In this part of the world, that's also true, but the tempo is very different. Driving anywhere out here is almost like a meditation. The long stretches of emptiness invite dreaming. Winding gravel roads draw the imagination. These roads look like they go somewhere interesting, somewhere you would want to go. Even though I drive to work on these roads every day, I never know what to anticipate. I can never see around the next bend or over the ridge in front of me. And I know somewhere along the way there's bound to be traffic. <laughs>